And the one idea I wanted to start with was, would you rather be right or happy? Would you rather be right or happy? And then let's go into that together, to the meaning of that, so deeply, so fully, you know, let's just have total, you know, devotion to going into that experience of that. And so, we can see, first of all, if there's any ways that we try to make exceptions to that. And that's good, too, because we have to be honest. We have to be, have a lot of self-honesty to s look at where, where, if we can agree we would rather be happy than right, then we can start to take a look at any thoughts, bring them into awareness, bring them to the light of anything that we want to be right about in terms of this world. And I think, you know, we can go a long way into that experience we want just from that. If we're really honest, if we, if we really put all of our cards on the table and we don't keep any tucked under or stuffed back there and behind us or whatever, we just get all those cards out. So we can start to clarify, would I rather be right or happy? Would I rather be right about my identity in this world, or would I rather be happy? Would I rather be right about the, e the way that the ego set up this whole cosmos, or would I rather be happy? Would I rather be right about any opinion that I hold, any opinion that I hold, or would I rather be happy? Would I rather be right about the past, or would I rather be happy? Any of these that I'm mentioning, hopefully one will start to trigger some emotion. Would I rather be right about my mother or my father, or my children, or be happy? You know, you can start to fill in the blanks of seeing that that this whole category of, of being right, right about a specific judgment, about knowing something about anything in this world as if we actually could know anything specific about a meaningless world. About from last night and what was going on here today, that things were breaking, it was just like a, a plethora of things you know, from alternators to car batteries to water, you know, pipes, you know, just blah, 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 blah a van, you know, stuck in the middle of a driveway, da, 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 da. And, and Suzanne was just saying, she said, I'm actually really just feeling that, that none of that, none of that matters, and that this is simply a call into prayer. Uh, she said, I just want to join with you and link with you that, that what I'm feeling is right because I seem to get a lot of people now that are knocking on my door and saying, there's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem, 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 you know, there's a lot of problems, danger, there's problems. And what I'm feeling is, this is just a call into prayer. Yeah. And, and I said, absolutely, we were only on the phone for 10 minutes, but I, I talked about Mary Baker Eddy, briefly, some of you know Christian science and everything, and it's amazing to me that I can go around the world and people go, well, you know about that Christian science, and you know, they don't believe in medicine, and they let little children die without giving them medication and everything, and I'll just go, really? Is that what Mary Baker Eddy means to you? Is that what Christian science means to you? And they say, yeah. And I say, oh, no, 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 it's all the whole teachings of Christian science are pray first. Mm -hmm. Pray first. Turn to God first. Not second, not third. All of this wanting to be right, all of this seeming to know something about medicine and bodies and treatments uh, and how parts of the body work together and the entire medical model is, is wanting to be right, 
instead of happy. And pray first is saying, I deserve happiness and I, I know the direction that my mind needs to go in. And blink, Suzanne and I just totally linked up into that because she said, that's exactly what I'm feeling and that's exactly how I want to spend this moment and this day. Not in logical analysis of what's going wrong. And this is Lesson 79 and 80 from the Course. You know, let me recognize the problem so it can be solved, that's 79. And then Lesson 80, let me recognize my problems have been solved. Doesn't that sound like enlightenment? Doesn't that sound like that's coming from the power and the glory of the living God? Let me recognize my problems have been solved. And Jesus is telling us that you have to go at it in through 79. He doesn't leave 80 just hanging there. It's like the approach is coming first to let me recognize the problem. And how much hum humbleness and, and, and deep sincerity it takes to start to admit I don't have relationship problems, I don't have financial problems, I don't have health issues, I don't have issues with the planets, with the, the atmosphere, with, I have no issues with pollution, I have no issues with politics, I have no issues with governments. You know, to actually come to start to, to say that all of those things are just mere distractions away from, oh, I've got a perceptual problem. And I have to see the problem exactly as it is before I can accept the solution. So this is where we come together and, and I think we can have a really valuable time together if we come to an agreement that we're going to just put out on the table what formerly we had believed to be the truth with a willingness to say, I would rather be happy than to hold on to, to keep in consciousness these ideas and beliefs. That's what we're really here for.